Hello Honors 100 students. Um, so I want to start out this video lecture just with um, a couple of reminders. Um, so first off, we are one week away from the research argument essay being due. Um, so please do keep an eye out on that. Um, you'll notice that there's no reading assigned um, for next Tuesday's class. Um, the main motivation for that is that um, after you do the reading that's due for um, th this class, the Tuesday, uh, April 7th class, as well as for the next class, um, you're sort of freed up some to give you a little bit of extra time to be able to focus on, on working on your essays. Um, so please use that time to your advantage. Uh, and I'm gonna, similar to uh, what I did previously, um, put out the offer that if anyone wants to kind of you know, reach out about doing peer reviews with each other. Um, excuse me, um, that, that, that can be um, a useful uh, thing to post here in the discussion thread that you're looking for a partner um, as well as to um, you know, reply that you, you are interested and so you can kind of communicate with each other um, and coordinate how you'd like to do that. Um, we are um, rapidly approaching the point where I probably won't be able to look at full drafts for people, um, but if you do want to still send me um, your thesis statement, your introductory paragraph, um, or general outline of what you're thinking, or a specific element you're kind of concerned about, basically up to a page or so of content, um, you know, up, up to basically the, the weekend, um, please do feel free to send that my way, and I can give you some feedback in that regard. Um, I don't want to kind of cut us short in the way that ordinarily, you know, in person, I would give you some peer review time and then I would kind of circulate around the room and be able to answer individual questions. Um, we can't do that exactly, but I still want to give you some of that experience. So, so please do feel free to reach out to me individually um, if you would like feedback um, along the lines of what I described there. Um, again, also a reminder that um, your revisions of Reading Response Essay 2, um, if you would like to submit anything, it's completely optional, but if you'd like to, um, that is due uh, Thursday of next Next week as well. So I know it's been a while since we looked at that essay, um, but as a reminder, um, if you did want to resubmit that for some additional credit, um, you're, you're welcome to do that. Um, Okay, with all of that said, um, so for, for most of today, we're going to focus on talking about um, the Karen Russell story, uh, Haunting Olivia. Um, so I know it's a longer read, but I think for many of you, this may have been um, a more accessible read than, than some of the textbook readings that we've done. Um, I think it's a, in some ways a more engaging, kind of more entertaining read, at least. And so I, I hope that you uh, felt similarly about the piece. Um, so I wanted to just you know, touch on uh, a few pieces about it, just kind of to open the discussion. So um, there are these diabolical goggles um, that the brothers are using. Um, and I guess I wanted to more generally ask sort of um, what these are kind of a, on a literal level, what, what, what the characters seem to think that these goggles allow them to do. Um, and then uh, if we want to take this to a more symbolic kind of place, um, what sense we make of them, what, what we think they're doing in the story. Um, if we were to assume that all the magic magical stuff isn't entirely real. Um, how do we understand the goggles in that case uh, versus how we might understand them if we do accept that this is sort of a, a magical story? I, I think that either of those readings could potentially hold up. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about Olivia. Um, so obviously she, she's the dead sister of our, of our main characters in this story. Um, but kind of what sense we make of her in terms of what she represents to these characters, um, who, who she sort of is to them, uh, any of that. I'm not kind of sure what, what people might, might think about. Um, th there's this concept of the, the glow worm grotto um, that, that Olivia um, has a connection to that um, seems to be a completely fictitious place and there's an implication that they, they might actually find this place um, in the real world. Um, and sort of similarly, what, what that might represent, how we understand that um, in this story. Um, on, on page nine, um, one of the elements that uh, I enjoy uh, more in this story uh, let's see if I, I can find it to, to read it uh, verbatim here. Um, oh, darn it. I thought I had it pulled up here, but now I'm not actually seeing it right away. Uh, oh, here, here it is. Okay, so um, the, it starts with the dialogue on maybe that rusty boat hanger. So it says, maybe that rusty boat hanger looked like the entrance to a cave to her, he'd said. Maybe, if you were eight and nearsighted and nostalgic for places you'd never been. So that, that's on page nine, kind of on the, on the lower half of the page. Uh, and I'm curious what we make of that, that short paragraph, and specifically the later part of that, the, you know, if you were eight and nearsighted and so on and so forth. Um, it, it's sort of, a, to, to me, almost a funny moment in this story, um, but, but what sense we make of what we think the narrator is trying to get across um, in that moment. Uh, I, I'm interested to hear what people might have to say about that. Um, 
I was also interested in touching upon um, the grandmother character, or Granana, uh, as she's referred to um, in this story, um, and what her perception of death is, um, and kind of how that might relate to um, the boys in this story. Um, so especially on page 10, uh, the story gets into this. If you want to revisit that, that part of the story to see what I'm talking about, um, I think it, it does color our understanding of this story to some extent, uh, or more to the point, um, how she and perhaps how the boys come to understand death um, in different ways in this story. Um, so let's see, um, so at the end of, um, let's see, page 11 and in, into early 12, um, th there's a lot of discussion around Olivia's body, um, and the fact that, that she has gone missing, um, I think it's, you know, presumable that, that she's dead, um, although the brothers don't necessarily seem to fully believe that, um, or at least believe that she's dead in the sense that she's truly gone from them. Um, but so they, they seem committed to this task of trying to find her body, and they get into it, um, yeah, specifically towards the end of 11 and into early page 12, um, that, that paragraph that starts, we never recover Olivia's body, um, and on to the next paragraph after that. Um, and I wanted to ask why this seems to matter so much to them, right? Um, I think that, that this is a relatable point. It's not that I'm suggesting that um, that's so weird that they'd want to find the body, um, but more so just um, what that seems to represent to them. Um, why is that relatable? What, why would people want um, to, to have that be the case after they've already lost their sister? Why, why would it matter whether or not they can find her body? Um, and then finally, th there's the very last paragraph of this thing. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to scroll to that myself here again. Um, so this page 20, again, last paragraph, it reads, um, I look for my sister, but it's hopeless. The goggles are all fogged up. Every fish burns lantern bright, and I can't tell the living from the dead. It's all just blurry light, light smeared with some celestial fingerprint all over the rocks and the reef and the sunken garbage. Olivia could be everywhere. Um, and taking it entirely out of context, I'd suggest this, this paragraph almost just doesn't make sense, especially the very last line of it. Um, in the context of the story, though, I feel like it's, it's a pretty profound image um, in terms of what, what it's kind of rendering. Um, in terms of you know, that moment in the story, but also more broadly, how that informs our reading of the entire story and, and these boys' relationship to Olivia at this point um, after she has seemingly gone from their lives, although obviously um, you know, gone only physically, not, not kind of gone from, from their mental space and what they're thinking about because I would say they're, they're thinking a lot about her, right? Um, so so, so what, what, what this might mean, what sense we can make of it, um, how we interpret the ending of this story. Um, and again, I, and I've only hit a few of the high spots here. Um, as always, I'd love to hear more from the class if there's, there are other things that kind of you know, drew your interest or passages that were sort of interesting to you um, or questions maybe that this story brought up for you. Um, but uh, more, more broadly, I know we've touched on this um, indirectly and you know, to some degree directly um, at earlier points in the class, especially when we were still meeting in person. Um, but, but a question is to sort of the elements of magical realism in this story, right? Um, because um, I think you, you could reasonably read this story as it's all metaphorical, and so there really aren't any elements of magic here. Um, but I think that... Um, for to be its most successful read of the story, we have to at least acknowledge the elements of magic at play here, right? That um, that there seems to be something kind of ghostly happening here. Um, what that ha what what that does to the story, how that impacts our reading, um, how that kind of shapes the worldview of these characters. Um, why Russell would choose to do this in in her story, and this is something that Karen Russell plays with a fair bit th throughout uh, fiction that she's written. Um, but it's pretty prominent in this one. So um, as always, really interested to hear your thoughts about all, all of these questions. And again, more broadly, if you have other points that kind of drew your attention or questions you want to raise to the class, uh, happy to hear those as well. All right. Uh, thank, thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll catch you next time.